is back. This video is primarily directed at Victor Zen. I'm curious if um, you can advocate for men's issues without resorting to attacking feminists or females in general. One thing straight first, I attack feminism, not women as a whole. Now to answer your question more directly, I can, but it doesn't work. Not yet. Personally, I would like to be able to support men's issues without any confrontation, but that's wishful thinking. When things get political, there's going to be conflict. Now, when I bare my teeth, it is toward feminism and not women. Feminism and women are two different things. One's a demographic, one's an ideology. I fully respect women's autonomy. But then that brings the obvious question of why I attack an ideology that claims to support what I respect. Doesn't that make me a hypocritical misogynist? Well, let's see. People think that feminism is the authority on gender issues and gender equality, much like people get the impression that Republicans are the authority on business and Democrats are the authority on environmentalism, that the NRA is the authority on guns, and so on and so on. No one owns these concepts, but people get those impressions in the mainstream. Feminism is excellent at presenting itself to people who are new to the discussion. We're about equality, tolerance, love, understanding, inclusion. Oh. All of these nice things. And people buy into it. They love it. So people allow feminist interest groups, politicians, and so on, represent their interests. Representation and support comes with money and decision-making power. But then feminism started breaking promises. And sometimes, bones. We have seen not only a failure of feminism to represent the issues it claims to represent, but it also has attacked and harmed innocent people. That's crazy, some say. How can an ideology hurt people? How can ideas hurt people? Well, in the abstract, they can't. At least, not until it gets institutionalized in government and education. So let me bring this back to your question. We have tried to be nice. We have tried to go out to support men's issues without causing any trouble, without causing any confrontation. But feminists actually come and stomp us flat anyway. We have evidence to support this, and what we do is we try to hold feminism accountable as a result. That is why you see the attacks. The attacks are not unprovoked. Don't worry, I made the claims, so I brought the proof. I'm approaching with evidence of three categories. First category, opposing peaceful advocates of men and boys. Second, spreading misinformation. And third, human rights violations on innocent people. Now, I do include peaceful advocates in general for one example. Corroborating references are in the low bar. So let's start with opposing peaceful advocates. First off, Aaron Pitsy, founder of the Domestic Violence Shelter Movement and the person who founded the first domestic violence shelter in London for women. She found out later that women tend to be violent toward their partners, as well as men being violent toward the women in their lives. And her findings to say that domestic violence is reciprocal ended up, her, ended up with her getting death threats from militant feminists and also her dog being killed. Pitsy had to emigrate from the country. Former feminist and National Organization of Women board member Dr. Warren Farrell went over to deliver a speech at the University of Toronto on the issue of men and boys in education. Feminists in the Gender Studies Department on the University of Toronto got it in their heads that Dr. Warren Farrell endorsed state rape for some reason. Dr. Warren Farrell is gentle, doesn't do that, and what he ended up having to deal with was a big feminist battalion coming in to stage a violent protest, blocking doors, verbally abusing people, breaking shit, and screaming. The police had to get involved. Some Catholic men in Argentina were peacefully protesting so that their church could be protected from vandalism. A feminist mob had formed to verbally and sexually abuse these men while they were standing in front of their church and praying. And just so we're clear, the feminists that were in the violent protest at the church were pro-choice and they were very angry with the Catholic Church's stance on abortion. And their response was to try to vandalize the church. So the men standing outside the church, they could have any number of opinions on abortion. And that's a whole different discussion. But this does not warrant violent protest. Now let me go ahead and make something clear before I give you a couple more examples. If feminism claims to be supportive of both men's rights advocacy and women's rights advocacy, if it refuses to offer representation in that scope, I consider this a form of opposition. Normally I would not think something like that, simply because, more often than not, I think organizations, individuals can choose to not do something out of their own right if they have control over resources. But, in the case of feminism, feminism promises equality, equal representation, and treating the sexes such that 
they end up being on a level playing field. And I have a weird relationship with the word equality, as I've mentioned in my other videos, but since feminism has set its agenda in a way that both men and women can expect something from feminism, when it starts getting picky and choosy, suddenly this can be interpreted as opposition if the neglect has a real negative impact. Then there's Earl Silverman. He wanted to start a domestic violence shelter for men in Canada. There was no equivalent support in the area. Of course, he wanted to get funding to support the organization. It could be considered a public service, yet he could not really find any funding except for a few hundred bucks, which is an insult. You can't run an organization with that little money. Eventually, Earl Silverman killed himself. And this is a testament, I think, to the kind of environment that men's issue advocacy is in. Based on where your question was coming from, I get the impression that you wanted to see men's issues advocacy without the confrontation with feminism. Okay, well, people have tried that. They have. They've tried to just defend their own interests. And yet, look what happened to them. And sometimes, look what doesn't happen to them. Some, when something happens to them, oftentimes it's feminist-initiated violence or opposition, and when something doesn't happen, it tends to be because feminists refuse to offer the representation they promise the world. Well, geez, we're a third of the way through the evidence. Let me go ahead and remind you here that the reason I'm telling you all this information is to show you that peaceful advocacy and not fighting feminism has still involved us getting into confrontations with feminism. And when we, what we started doing is recording this data. We started to realize that, holy shit, these people are actually in the way of human rights advocacy, and we need to prove this. Category 2, spreading misinformation. Jacqueline Friedman, director of Women Action in the Media, started a campaign on Facebook to remove hate speech against women. They did not target anything that was be considered hate speech against men, even though it was on Facebook. Facebook has been good about removing hate speech without any consideration of gender. Thankfully, some of the, issue, some of the uh, posts I've seen that are hateful to men have been removed when they were reported. But Women Action in the Media has only targeted any posts that target women, and on top of that, has removed anything remotely critical of feminism, even though those criticisms of feminism were not hateful. The misinformation being spread is that feminism is something that cannot be criticized. I believe in a previous response to one of your videos, if not yours, another response, I offered a link to a paper by an attorney named Edward Greer who noticed that what he called legal dominance feminism has claimed that only 2% of rape allegations were false. He traced back where that claim came from and found out that somebody made it the fuck up. And that trail ran cold. The actual percentage of false rape allegations are much higher. The actual number, I believe that's still in contention. The one in four rape statistic, debunked. The wage gap, debunked. Check the low bar. Category 3, Human Rights Violations. We got Nicholas Alabertian and Vladik Filler, two men that were convicted of crimes based on hearsay with no corroborating evidence. This is considered a violation of due process and therefore a human rights violation. I highly recommend you read the articles by Lucien Valsan of A Voice for Men. He does an excellent job talking about human rights violations straight in legal code and in motions in political bodies like the European Union to show the kind of sick things that feminists do out in an, on an international scale. If you ever heard of the Agent Orange files, they talk about Radfem Hub, which has women that are discussing male genocide. Then I could go on to talk about the blueprint letter and other forms of nastiness, but again, I'm starting to feel like this is going to stretch on really long, and I gave you plenty of material to get started. Feminism fails, breaks shit, and, te and generally makes people miserable. And when others come to pick up the slack, they slap it down and accuse those who would dare question them of misogyny. The Innocence Project can tell you about guys who were locked up without any corroborating evidence. People are wrongfully convicted. Families are destroyed. Men that end up in these prisons who are wrongfully convicted end up being raped. And people in my own family 
tell me that men who are raped in prisons don't count. That's what they said. They don't count. Their words. Feminism cheers on the carnage and blames everything but itself when people call it out on its shit. Oh, but this is the fringe, right? Not all feminists are like that. Some feminists are nice. Yeah, well, that doesn't help. We are at a point where too many people are, are distrusting feminism and too much damage has been done to want for us to get, want to give feminism a second chance. When feminist individuals and organizations do not have decision-making capacity, they still have connections with the media and they will shame the bejesus out of anyone who disagrees with them. Anti-feminism developed out of a desire for change. Not as a desire to bring women back to the kitchen or to do anything consistent with the stereotype of the misogynist. No. Anti-feminism is about saying, Feminism, I gave you a shot. I don't like what you're doing. Now, to be fair, it is conceivable that there is a branch of anti-feminism that concerns itself with turning women into subservient housewives. That's certainly a possibility. But I would not think that these people speak for anyone but themselves, just like I can't speak for anyone but myself. But for the next couple minutes of this video, I am going to be start using the word we to refer to anti-feminists. Not to try to speak for people that aren't me, but just to kind of refer to the anti-feminists that I've personally worked with and to refer to the kind of philosophy that we've built, the kind of identity that we've built, the kind of community that we built. So, again, I don't claim to speak for all these people, but if it sounds like I am, don't worry, that's not my intention. It's okay for us to be angry. That's a normal human response to the shit we've been seeing. It's okay for us to speak out. And if people don't like us speaking out, I'm sorry, what do you want me to say? We are political participants that have a stake in the outcome of society because it affects our lifestyles. I'm certainly anti-feminist and a lot of us are banding together. We're kind of making friends now. And we are content that even though we can't speak for one another, we can't really claim to speak for anyone other than ourselves, we are confident in saying that we're establishing a new identity, a new way of setting up our own lives without having to ask feminism for permission to consider our humanity, to consider that men are human beings. We, that's not negotiable. At one point you mentioned approaching feminism and joining forces with them in order to make sure that they support equality. But why can't we do our own thing? Why? Why can't we establish our own identity? Why can't we come up with our own representation? Why can't we go our own way? And believe me, we're trying to clean up the mess. I founded the first men's rights college group funded by the A Voice for Men community. Not the first men's rights college group ever, but again, some of us are working. We're doing the best we can. And even then, when I was, found, when I was founding the organization, I did this in a very peaceful, nice way. Still got a hate note. I left a link in the low bar to a note that a feminist dropped off by the table that I was running, and you'll see that she essentially calls me a white supremacist. So, what the fuck? Can we support men's issues without attacking feminism? Yes, we can, in theory, but that doesn't work. You can talk to a nice feminist every now and again, but I've noticed that they tend to go through the no true Scotsman fallacy route, where they'll say, oh, well, they're just the fringe, and no true feminist is like that. Oh, well, excuse me, Mrs. Real Feminist. I don't see you offering the kind of representation we need. How about you pick up a shovel and help us and understand that we have to fix a lot of the damage that's been done. If you're not willing to offer that kind of work and you're just going to sit over here lecturing us about how feminism is supposed to work without actually doing anything, go fuck yourself. I swear to God. Feminism is an obstacle for humanism. It stands in the way of humanitarian work. It stands in the way of the very thing it promised. So now we are trying to chip away at it. And while we're chipping away at it, we have to listen to it heckle us about how everything is our fault and how if we just trust it, it'll fix everything. But we're not going to trust it again. We're done. We're done trusting it. And we need to hold it accountable for the damage it's done. It has been given an opportunity 
to fix the inequities that could be found between genders. And there are examples of unfairness you can find. Unfairness is all over the world. But feminism has created a competition out of suffering and has, in essence, blamed men for everything, presumed guilt on the part of men, and made bigger and bigger strides to victimize as many women as possible for the gain of the ideology, the gain of the narrative, and the gain of the people who justify their careers on feminism's work. I can support men's issues without attacking feminism. And I certainly do support men's issues without attacking women. I know wonderful women who I respect entirely. I respect women's autonomy. Any, There are values that I have that some people would say, well, see, you're a feminist. No. I agree with a talking point feminism uses to market itself. But just because I have hair and a dog has hair does not make me a dog. I don't care what Wikipedia says. I don't care what the dictionary says. I don't care what feminists have to say about feminism. I care about what's empirically verifiable. And I'm not as concerned about people's interpretations of a model in their heads. I'm a good person. Any label applied to me outside of that is one that I give myself. No one labels me but me. Even so, I do respect bodily autonomy, and it's for that reason that I band together with other women who I can treat as fellow adults. But what's interesting is the women I band with here in this political sphere also call themselves anti-feminists. Because we want a change. Feminism is an obstacle to that change. So we're going to chip away at it until it either crumbles or at least moves out of the way and leaves us the fuck alone. But even then, even if anti-feminists, MHRAs, and MGTOs were to calm down when men's issues become mainstream and feminism backs off, they will come back and hold feminism accountable again and again and again every time feminism, feminists, or any organization violates the humanity or the rights of men or women under the guise of gender equality. You had a, a second question in your video. I'm not going to address it in this one. I am going to address it, just not here. I would like to wait until our Skype conversation to sort out the remaining details. In the meantime, while you're waiting to get your internet back and you outside of the public library and you can maintain that call, I would like you to go ahead and dig through the material. This is your chance to understand the anti-feminist side. Victor Zena.